everyone, it's Stephanie, and welcome back to my channel. Hi, Butch. Can you say hi to the camera? Can you say hi to the camera? No, he's out. So, today I am bringing you my July wrap up two months late because of who I am as an individual, and I've just been out of the YouTube group. But I'm back, and I'm ready to dive into all the awesome books I read in July, so let's just jump right in. The first book I read in July was Death in Dark Blue by Julia Buckley. This is the second book in the Writer's Apprentice mystery series, and I loved this book. I gave it four out of five stars. It was just a really fun, cozy mystery, and I won't go into details of this book because of spoilers, but it basically follows the main character, Lena, and she lands this amazing job as a sort of ghostwriter for her favorite novelist of all time, and the novelist, Camilla, lives in this really cool gothic mansion, and the mystery and mayhem ensue, and it's just a really good time. I really enjoyed the writing style. It didn't read like one of the super cheesy cozies. It was more um, on the heavier side of the cozy spectrum, if that makes sense, but I highly recommend it. It was really good. Next, <laughs> I read for the third time this year, Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I won't go into this too much because I do have a video review which I will link, but basically this is my third time reading it, 5 out of 5 stars, I love it, it's one of my favorite books of this year, so if you haven't read this, please go check it out. The next book I read was Pruning the Dead by Julia Henry. This is the first book in a new series and this follows a retiree, Lily who lives in Goosebush, Massachusetts, and she is a big gardener and just well known around town for having this awesome green thumb. And they, the town has a plan to revive um, their park. She has a garden party before then, and her ex-husband's caddy wife shows up and causes a scene and gets thrown out and then later when they actually start the park revival and they're getting everything ready to go the ex-husband's wife is found dead in a pile of mulch and Lily gets involved to try to solve the mystery and I enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I did I really like cozy mysteries but again this one wasn't super cheesy, so I thoroughly enjoyed this. I gave it four out of five stars, so definitely go check her out. I read Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, and Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. I finally did Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. I gave all of these five out of five stars. Next, I read Death in a Budapest Butterfly by Julia Buckley, the same author that wrote Death in Dark Blue. And I actually was lucky enough to get an e-arc from NetGalley before it got released. And it follows Hannah Keller and her family, and they run a Hungarian tea shop. Her grandmother is known to give really accurate, sometimes ominous readings on tea leaves. One day they are at a tea party and one of the guests gets a really ominous reading from Hannah's grandmother and she turns up dead. Turns out her tea was poisoned. And so Hannah gets involved to try to solve the mystery and help clear the shop's name. I thought this was a really unique cozy because it incorporated a lot of Hungarian folklore in it, and so it had just a little bit of a fantastical element. I gave that book four out of five stars. The next book I read was Plantation Shutters 
which is the first book in the Cajun Country Mystery Series by Ellen Byron. And honestly, I cannot remember what this was about. But I gave it three out of five stars. Next, I read Ghosts of the Shadow Market by Cassandra Clare, Sarah Ruth Brennan, Maureen Johnson, Kelly Link, and Robin, Robin Wasserman. And this is a book of novellas that follows Brother Zachariah from the Infernal Devices, Mortal Instruments, all the series. So I really enjoyed this. Um, normally the novellas for Cassandra Clare aren't as good to me and I have a harder time connecting with the characters even though they're pretty good length novellas. Um, but this one I actually read in a single sitting. I started it at probably like 8 at night and I just read straight through overnight, finished it the next morning, and I absolutely loved it. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars just because there were some stories in here that weren't perfect, and I did like some novellas better than others, but I thought it was really interesting, and I loved the atmosphere of the shadow market, and I loved learning more about Brother Zachariah, and seeing a lot of the characters that we see um, in the other series. So, highly recommend. Next, I read Fence Volume 1 by C.S. Cat, Joanna the Mad, and Joanna La Fuente. And this was such a cute graphic novel. It follows these boys at a boarding school who are on the fencing team and they are all kind of competing for the coveted spots on the school fencing team. So they're having their tryouts and there is some queerness in here, which my heart just loves, and some possible romances and humor. And the art style is really good. I loved it, the story was good. And I actually did not have the second volume in physical copy, so I bought it on Kindle so I could read it. So I did. I read Fence Volume 2. I gave both of them 4 out of 5 stars. So I read probably one of my favorite books of the month, and definitely one of my favorite books of the year. And that was King of Fools by Amanda Foody. This is the UK edition because I wanted a paperback version. And this is the second book in the Shadow Game series. The first book is Ace of Shades. And I won't go into this one because of spoilers, but in Ace of Shades, we follow the character N, and she comes um, to New Reigns to try to find her mother who is missing. And along the way, she meets Levi, and he is caught up in a Ponzi scheme that goes wrong and they get involved with the major crime lord in the city and you know be, get under her control and have to do her bidding and they end up in this really horrible situation that they have to get out of called the shadow game and I absolutely loved absolutely loved Ace of Shades. I gave it five out of five stars. Lucy! I've read it twice. Um, I loved King of Fools even more than I loved Ace of Shades. I read this, it seems like in one setting, but I read it in a couple days and it's a pretty chunky book, but I thought the writing in this was so good and it was so action-packed and fast-paced and there was so much character development and you just get a lot more of Ends and Levi's backstories and see their, see their relationship grow, and this was just so good. If I could give it more than five stars, I definitely would, and it'll definitely be something that I reread in the near future. Next I read Beneath the Sugar Sky by Seanan McGuire. This is the third book in the Wayward Children series, and the Wayward Children series follows different children who have gone to these fantastical magical worlds and then have been sent back to the real world and they don't really know how to cope 
after being in that amazing environment. So they go to a school for wayward children to try to learn how to cope in the real world. And this is the third book. It follows the story of Rini, who's lost her mother, and it's very sugary. <laughs> the world that she goes to is like a confection world, so there's sugar everywhere, and it's just so sweet, and I thought this story was just really sweet and wholesome, and the atmosphere was so cool and whimsical and so I gave this book four out of five stars and I am excited to get to the next book. I think every book I read in the series gets better. Next I read Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl. I read it for the reading rush and I don't really think I need to go into what Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is. <laughs> But basically, you had to read a book and then watch its movie or TV adaptation. So I read Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and then I watched the Gene Wilder version, which is always so good. And it really brought back my childhood. I gave it five out of five stars. It's such a good children's book, and it's definitely one of my favorites. Next, I read Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This is the really pretty Owl Crate edition. This follows Elizabeth, who is a, an apprentice in a magical library, and the books are enchanted and magical, and they're called grimoires, and they are in levels, so you have level one, which is pretty tame, and then you have these higher up levels where they have to be chained in because they're just so maybe malevolent or active and if they get out they transform into monsters and in the process um, one of the grimoires is sabotaged and it gets free and Elizabeth tries to intervene but she's caught red-handed so she's actually implicated in the crime she doesn't have anywhere else to turn so she actually turns to her sworn enemy who is a sorcerer Nathaniel and they get together and try to get to the bottom of who is behind the sabotage and it turns out that there is a lot more evil going on than they ever imagined and I really really like this story it was so imaginative it's a standalone and I loved the magical library and the idea of grimoires and I loved Elizabeth and Nathaniel's relationship because it built at just the right pace and I I love this so much I ended up rereading it again in August so less than a month I read it twice and I highly recommend it it's so good I gave it four out of five stars Next, I read Death Note Volumes 1 and 2, and this was such a cool graphic novel. I've never read anything like it, but basically, I can't remember the names of the characters that have the Death Note, but basically, it goes to Earth, and when a human gets a hold of it, they are in charge of this notebook called the Death Note, and you can write down you have to know the name of the person so you write that down and then you can write down the day and time they're gonna die and how they're gonna die and it happens the main character in the book is super smart and is going to extremes to hide his identity but at the same time continue his work in ridding the world of criminals and crime I gave both books four stars but each volume gets better and better and it was just such a really cool concept and I highly recommend you check it out. The next book I read is Mooncakes by Suzanne Walker and Wendy Zhu and I was lucky enough to receive an ARC from NetGalley and so I got to review this book. It doesn't come out until I think October and it follows the story of Nova, who's a teen witch, 
and she works at her grandparents, her grandmother's bookshops. One night she discovers a wolf in the woods and it turns out that it's her childhood crush Tam who is a transgender werewolf and Tam is battling this demon horse in the woods and um, he's being pursued by dark forces and they have to figure out what's going on. So Nova kind of comes into her powers a little bit and Tam discovers more of himself and his powers and they kind of rekindle their friendship and I loved it so so much. I'm definitely gonna buy a finished copy when it comes out but I love that it had a really good transgender rep, queer rep, um, really good character development, the art style is gorgeous and it was just such a good book and I have not heard a single bad review of it so definitely pick up a finished copy in October. The next book I read is probably in my top five favorite books of this year and it's kind of personal to me so it really resonated but that was There's Something About Sweetie by Sandhya Manan. This follows the story of Ashish Patel who you probably remember from When Dimple Met Rishi. He's Rishi's brother and Ashish has just gone through a really bad breakup and he's learning how to deal with that and so he's kind of mourning the loss of his relationship and trying to become his former self. And then it also follows Sweetie, our main character, and she is a fat girl who is the fastest girl on her track team. And so she is just owning her identity and trying to convince her mother that being fat is not the end of the world and it doesn't define her, it's just part of who she is. But she has so many more other qualities besides just being fat. One day, um, Ashish's, Ashish's, Ashish's friend recommends that he ask his parents to set him up because it worked really well for Rishi. And so Ashish decides to give it a try and so his parents end up trying to set him up with Sweetie. And I just thought this was such a good book. I'm going to do a full review on it because I loved it so much. But Sweetie was such a good character. And the audiobook is mainly how I listened to this the first time. And I read it in one sitting. I ended up staying up all night just listening to the audiobook. And I love this book so much. I gave it five out of five stars, and I just don't have enough good things to say about it. So definitely, definitely, please go read this. The last book I read in July is When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandhya Manan. This follows Dimple, who is super into computers, and she gets to go to something called InsomniaCon, which is all about coding and making your own app at the college that she wants to go to and she finally convinces her parents to do it and let her go and when she gets there she meets this guy Rishi who just walks up to her and starts talking about relationships and getting married and he jokes about her being his future wife so she throws her iced coffee in his face and runs off and I just thought this was such a good book and there's just so much going on, and I love that Dimple is a super smart computer science girl, and she is so focused on her career. She doesn't have to have a boyfriend, and she's not worried about wearing makeup every day, and she's just such a relatable character. So I gave this book four out of five stars. I absolutely loved it. Please go read it. But yeah, that is my July wrap-up. Sorry, this is going to be like five years long. But I read a total of 22 books in July, so it was a really good reading month. Have you read any of these books? If so, let me know what you think down below, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.